Hello and welcome to another women's show with me, your host, Chris Brack. And today we are delighted to be joined by Liverpool women's captain, Neve Fahey. Neve, thank you for coming on. How are we? Hi, Chris. Uh, all good. Thanks a million. Thanks for having me on. No problem. No problem. Well, let's talk about the, the best bit, which was uh, the win of the weekend. It was great, wasn't it? Uh, first win of the week, weekend. Bit bit nervy at the end, but the first half was fabulous. Yeah, it was. Um, like It was a bit nervy towards the end, all right? And obviously... Uh, it's not something that we'd like going forward in the future, but um, it, the important thing was to get the win, like you said, and get the three points. It was, yeah. It was good to see uh, Rihanna Dean, uh, our new striker. She got her first two and she played really well. So having you, you players settling in? Yeah, really good. Um, like I said, it's great for Rihanna to get off the marks and, and two cracking goals as well. So, uh, yeah, it's great for her and obviously great for the team that, to be banging in some goals. Uh, new players have all settled in really well, obviously, uh, we've had a lot of new players this season, so it can be difficult to bed them in. But I think we've done really well with the group that we have. We've got a good group of girls and everyone's settled in really well. So, um, yeah, so far, so good. Cool, cool. So let's have a bit of a talk of your career. Because for people who don't know, you know, how, what you've done in the game, you know, uh, you moved to England in 2008 and joined Arsenal, winning numerous titles and FA Cups. Um, how did you move to Arsenal come about? Uh, so it basically came about um, when the Irish women's national team were playing the quadruple winning team of Arsenal at the time in a friendly in Dublin. Uh, so the, we, ha we had three Irish girls on the Arsenal team at that time. So we set up a friendly between the Irish senior women's team and Arsenal. And um, from there, I, I ended up getting scouted from that game. Um, I played you know, quite well and then uh Vic Akers asked me afterwards if I would like to come over um to Arsenal so obviously I was overjoyed excited at the chance of um joining the girls over at Arsenal so I, I took the opportunity yeah when it when it arose cool excellent so and then from there you, you had uh you went to Chelsea went to Chelsea for a couple of years and then you got a move to Bordeaux um what was the move to, what was the move to Bordeaux like um you know different culture different country was was it the football vastly different or was it um similar style to what you play in the UK? I think it was um it was it was a really good experience. It was different in terms of football wise. Um very much like to to play in every scenario, play out um from the back a lot. Uh it's all very technical. A lot of the players are very technical, even the we'll say the teams in the lower half um all very technical so it was it was really enjoyable um as a football and experience to sample that side of the game was it was purely technical uh so yeah I, re I really enjoyed the league but I suppose I did miss the WSL at that time for the cut and thrust of how competitive games can be and you know that that intensity um was missing that you yeah that you come to you really enjoy and miss um so that would probably be the difference between the two cool so what did you miss when you were in France that you couldn't get in France? So I think that's uh, football wise or anything. So I think I spoke to Kerry Holland. She said she missed uh, Sunday dinners uh, when she was in America. <laughs> so that, that was that was her big big miss. So I didn't know what 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 did you miss in France that you couldn't couldn't get over there? Uh, well, a typical Irish person would say a good Guinness, but I never had much of that when I'm in the UK anyway. So <laughs> I didn't really get to. I, I can't say a pint of the black stuff. Uh, what did I really? I to be honest, I just embraced the French culture and the food and everything. I I really enjoyed the experience there. Um, the food was amazing, so I didn't have any trouble with missing uh, the cuisine compared to the UK <laughs> or Ireland. So that was an enjoyable experience. Probably just actually having a good conversation because obviously, um, yeah, my French wasn't amazing, and I it, it, that part of it. That side of things is difficult when when you don't have a great grasp of the language, and then yeah, in in France it's predominantly um, French speaking. Obviously, you know some countries you go they have a high level of English, but that's not the case over there. So yeah, I, um, I, that probably having a good chat with someone was probably one of the biggest things that I missed. Cool. So then, two thousand eight, um, sorry, two thousand eighteen, even so, you got the opportunity to come to Liverpool. So you know, how did that come come about? Uh, you know, for you for yourself. I suppose I just spoke to my agent at the time and told him that I'd like to return to the WSL and just, you know, what options were available. And he came back with a few options and then Liverpool was one of them. And after that, I was like, right, OK, that's that's where I'd like to go. Liverpool is the club I've supported. And 
Um, I spoke to Neil Redfern, who was a manager at the time, and he was very keen on having me on board. So uh, it felt it felt right. It felt like a good thing for me. So yeah, that's that's basically how that kind of came about. Cool. Yeah. How how did your family react? Because you're from a family of lots of Reds. You know, you're big big Reds in your family. So were, were they overjoyed that you were going to Liverpool? Yeah, yeah, they were. They come, you know, they were they were ecstatic for me. They were so excited. Um, yeah, this where I'm from. There's a there's a load of Reds that uh keep up to date all with both the the guys and and the women. So, um, the, everyone was really proud of me where I'm from, in my local area, Clannan and Galway. So, it was it was a big it's a big deal. It's a big deal in, even for an Irish person to be representing Liverpool Football Club. So, yeah, it was it was amazing really when that went through. Cool. So, I mean, over your career, you've you've kind of played uh, centre back. You, I think you're left back at Arsenal. And you've played. Uh, you started this year playing a uh, holding midfield. Do you? Ha- I know you're very versatile. Do you have a preference to where you like to play, or are you quite happy to play wherever? Yeah, for, uh, you know, I'm quite happy to play wherever. But I suppose predominantly, I would be well. I class myself as a centre back first. Um. I, yeah. My younger days, I was a you know a, a left back and started off playing my trade there. But then centre half is where I think my it suits my best attributes. Uh. So I'd probably say centre half. Cool. Cool. So over the years, from uh, your days at Arsenal up to your days at Liverpool, now how has the the women's game uh, developed or changed in your opinion uh, for the better? Uh, are, are there things you, you would still like to see improve? Yeah, it's, obviously there's always things to improve on, um, but the difference where we've come in, in we'll say, that kind of 12-year period from when I started off to where we are now is is massive. Um, the whole game has become professionalised at the top level, and then you obviously the, see the filter down into the Women's Championship, how competitive that is now, and then most of the teams actually going full-time, so you have... You know, two de- two decent levels um there for people to aspire to to play professionally, um so yeah it's an it's a night and day the comparison in that space of time which is amazing but obviously there's loads of things that still need to improve and and hopefully will improve but the to see the growth in that space of time has been has been fantastic. Cool. So you are living like most Liverpool fans dream. You're playing for your favorite team. You're actually captain now of your favorite team. I mean, what was that moment like when they offered you the captaincy? Uh, incredible um what an honor to be able to captain this club uh yeah not only like you said do I get to play for the for the team but I have also had the privilege of leading the leading the club and leading the team out so um yeah when I got the call obviously from Vicky uh Vicky Jepson when when Soph um you know she had her her stuff going on with her career in a nursing home and wasn't able to to commit during that period of COVID and asked me would I take the armband and Obviously, I grabbed it with both hands. It was it was an absolute honor, and it's it's a it's something I'll be forever grateful for. And yeah, it's a it's a, a massive moment for me in my career. Excellent, excellent. And uh, Rachel Finesse was um, offered the uh, vice captaincy. So uh, you two uh, you two uh, work very well as uh, as a tandem because uh, Rachel has been brilliant since she signed for us a couple of years ago. Yeah, Fernie's a Fernie's a great person to have alongside you um, in terms of leadership. Um, she's she's got so much experience in the game and she you know we I think we complement each other quite well in terms of our types of personalities as well um yeah I, I can't see enough positive things about Fernie she's been she's been top notch since she, since she's come to the club and um yeah it's great to just have her leadership there alongside alongside me as well as the other girls there's, there's a lot of leaders in this team it's not just the two of us so um but yeah to have Fernie as a as a close ally there is is fantastic uh- with the way the women's game is, are you? Do you feel the pressure of like being seen as like you know a role model? Because the way I try and describe it to people at the moment is, um, obviously, you know, my daughter Olivia, she's at most of the games, uh, so she loves to actually get selfies of him to- and talks with. Him. And I, and I tr- equate to people as when I was Olivia's age, say, you know, I loved like you know Steve McManaman and Robbie Fowler. That's the equivalent of Steve McManaman and Robbie Fowler saying hello to me every game, which you you don't get. So, you know. Do you feel the the pressure of being that sort of the inspiration, or you know, does it help? Does it help you even further? Oh, it's I I don't I would I don't see it as pressure at all. I see it as a privilege to be able to be a role model and and have such close contact with their fans. Like you said, 
Um, it's a little bit different in the men's game. You wouldn't you wouldn't get that contact. Whereas with us, mm. we're very visible and we're very accessible, which I think is amazing, really, because you get to be up close and personal with with everyone. And you know, it's it's it can only be a good thing, really, to inspire the next generation, like Olivia. Um, so it's it's definitely not pressure. It's de- and I definitely say it's it's more of a privilege, really. Excellent news. So, so you, you're living in the city at the moment. So, when you're not playing football, you know, what, how do you unwind in Liverpool? What's your, what's what's the uh, unwind situation at Liverpool at the moment? Yeah, there's good. There's loads of things to do in Liverpool. Obviously, the yeah, we we're we're blessed to live in such a a good city. Which yeah, it's got many distractions outside of football. Um, me personally, I just like to relax and and chill, and that's something as simple as going for a coffee or going for a long walk in one of the parks, uh, Sefton or, or somewhere like that, just, just to chill out really. And yeah, just, uh, there's so many beautiful things around Liverpool to go for a walk down around the docks. Just you could people watch all day down there. So um, yeah, just chill, really go out, enjoy the outdoors and get some, get some nice food or get a coffee. That's, that's my idea of relaxing. Cool. So let's talk about the squad a bit because uh, we we did some of the things with Kerry. So you know we'll put you under the same spotlight. Is um, who's the joker in the pack? Oh, there's there's a lot, but Bo Kearns is probably up there. Okay, okay. Because we've had Ash so far, so we've got Ash and Bo at the moment. Uh, who's the best trainer? Best trainer. Uh, we have a couple of them, but oh, that's di- that's difficult. I'd probably say. Who would I say? Michaela Moore is probably, I would say, a brilliant trainer. Um, yeah, I'd probably go with Michaela Moore Mouse. Cool, cool. And uh, who's the most skillful? Uh, most skillful probably be Mel Lawley or uh, Bo Kearns has got good good skill. Carla Humphreys yeah. actually, is, Carla Humphreys got quality skill as well. So. Um, some of the stuff she does in training is outrageous, and actually, Jazz Matthews as well. So all the four of them. Cool, cool. So, from your uh, long career so far, what's been the best game that you've played in? Um, whether, that, whether that's for Liverpool or for Ireland. The best game I've played in. Uh, the most memorable one I can think with Ireland is when we played the Netherlands away, and we drew one-one with them, and they were then European champions. So to go there and go to real, you know, that we were getting booed and everything because we were time wasting and we were doing everything possible to make sure the game was as short as possible. Uh, but that was that was a really memorable, you know, victory. Uh, victory wasn't a victory, but it felt like a victory because we yeah, took yeah. a point off the European champions. Um, and the most memorable game then, I think most recently with Liverpool has probably beaten United in the Conti Cup last season. That was a great win. And then also... From my career, I suppose I've had a lot of success with Arsenal. So probably my first FA Cup victory um, when we beat Sunderland um, at the stadium, uh, not the stadium of light, at Derby County's grounds. That was a great moment for me to win my first silverware starting on the pitch. Fantastic. So um, this weekend then we've got uh, Bristol City. Um, for people who don't don't know, tickets are still available. So if you go on the Liverpool website, you can uh, still buy tickets, but you must buy them. Beforehand, you can't buy them on the on the gate. What sort of challenge do you expect from Bristol? Because they were relegated from uh, WSL, um, and with three of their players have now uh, moved to us. And so, what sort of challenge are you expecting from Bristol? Uh, expecting a really tough challenge. I've seen they've got a lot of goals uh, in them from their first two games. They've you know quite comfortably have a lot of goal scorers there. So, and then obviously they've a lot of young talent, and we know Sitara Murray obviously being the next Liverpool player is there. So. They're, they may have lost a few players and been got relegated last season, but it's going to be a difficult game. So we're expecting a, a tough game. And um, yeah, we, yeah, basically a tough game that so we'll see on Sunday. Yeah, you look forward to being back at Prenton with the fans again. So I know the Lioness game was a disappointment in terms of results, but it must have been great to have the fans finally back uh, and in full voice. Yeah, it was it was amazing. Um, the the lift it gives everyone. We're all talking about it. You know, some of the girls have never played in front of the Liverpool fans before. And they couldn't believe, you know, the difference and the buzz and the excitement it gives everyone. So obviously it was a disappointing result, but hopefully we'll have something better to cheer about this Sunday. Yeah. So um, obviously you've still got plenty of years left in your career, but have you sort of started thinking what you like to do post playing? Is it management? Is it going into the media or is it something completely non-sport related? 
Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure. I have a few I have a few different options going in my head. Um, I don't have one definitive option, but I yeah, I have a few in terms of coaching and media that I've done a lot of, you know, uh, practice in or we'll say work experience in. So I have to get my badges. Um, so I'm in the process of doing that. So I have a few things I haven't decided on on one as of yet, but I suppose the the more the more strings to my bow, the better, I suppose. Excellent, excellent. So um with the with the Bristol game com, coming up, uh, I think there's a little bit of a break then. What the sort of aims of the season? I, I suppose the obvious aim is promotion, but uh, any sort of personal targets for yourself? No, I, I don't ever set personal targets. It's always group aligned. So, you know, I'm just one of a part of the team. So I, yeah, I never set myself any individual goals. That's just the way I am. Um, I align myself within the group and our, our targets are our targets. And, and that's just how I, that's just how I go from. Excellent. Excellent. We gonna win. Gonna win on Sunday. I hope so. I hope so. We've been yeah. we've been training well. We've had a good week training. Um, we've got our first win. So ho- hopefully, we can follow it up with another good win and and give the fa- give you guys something to cheer about on Sunday. Let's hope so. Let's hope so. It'd be great to make it uh, two two out two and two, wouldn't it? Um, so just before we go, um, for, for those of you who are watching, uh, I have mentioned it on every show. We'll keep mentioning it. Is um, Sienna Steps. Um, we still need to raise money for Sienna. So we are halfway there now to her target. So that is actually enough for her to get her treatment. But we do need to raise the other £60,000 now to get her to be able to stay in America for a month with her family because for her ongoing physio that she'll need. So look for the hashtag. It's on our Twitter feed. It's on it's our tag tweet. Just go on the GoFundMe and give what you can and share what you can. But Neve, thank you very much for coming on. It's been a great honour and hopefully we can get you on Again, later in the season when we're talking about promotion and what we're going to do in the WSL next year. Thanks, Chris. Great talking to you. No worries. Thanks very much. Until then, we'll have another women's show soon. But until then, I'm being your host, Chris. Thanks again to Neve. Thank you.